water, earth, fire, air. Long ago, the dual terminal world lived in harmony, but everything changed when the Shadals struck. Only the Avatar, master of the four elements, could bring peace to the land, but when the world needed her most, she vanished. A thousand years have passed and I discovered the new Avatar, a light monster by the name of Baxia. And while his power over light may be great, I do believe that he has much to learn. I believe that Baxia can save the world. What's going on YouTube? This is ParkerLad88 coming at you with another video. Today I've got another deck profile for you guys featuring my take on Yang Zings. So I hope you guys enjoy and let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and get started with our monsters. We first start off by running three copies of Jouto. Jouto is the monster that you always want to see in your starting hand because what he lets you do is toss two Yangzing cards from your hand in order to special summon two Yangzing monsters from your deck. One with zero attack and one with zero defense. He lets you go for that first turn synchro play. And, you know, a Yazi that can't be destroyed by battle or targeted or affected by traps is... That's a pretty strong first turn play, just saying. Next up, we have three copies of Swanny. He is the beater, and the Synchro Monster brought out using him as material gains 500 extra attack and defense. Then we have my favorite aesthetically, which is Beyond. Beyond prevents your Synchros from being destroyed by battle. You got two Bixies, which prevent your, Yang your uh, Synchro Monsters from being affected by traps. Two copies of Chi Win, because uh, Chi Win, he is a Plague Spreader, which can be kind of handy. Sometimes, whenever one of your monsters would you be destroyed, one of your Yangling monsters would be destroyed. Special summon from the grave, but he gets banished whenever he leaves the field after that. Uh, next up, we run two copies of Treasure of the Yangzing. I actually like this guy a lot because he lets me go for a bunch of those synchro plays I would go for on uh, my opponent's turn. When he special summoned from the deck, because I'm never going to pendulum, pendulum summon this guy. You can target one other Yangzing muscle you control, and you make that a tuner, which I think is really cool. It allows me to go for those plays that I told you about. Also, whenever he's used for a synchro summon, he goes back to the bottom of the deck. Then we also run two copies of this one, the secret of the Yangzing. He is your searcher whenever he is destroyed by card effect or pendulum summon, which once again, I never do. So, he's got 2600 defense, which is great. He's a high level monster, which lets me go for my high level synchro plays. And when he dies, I get to search for a path, which is something I generally always want to do. Then we also have one copy of Tao Tai. Tao Tai, he's a, he's a big beater, or a big enough beater, and he is a high level monster, which once again allows me to go for my high level plays. A couple of notes about Yang Zing. Um, all the non-effect monsters have the ability to uh, excel synchro, i.e. synchro summon during your opponent's turn, which is one of their cool gimmicks. And then um, <coughs> also, the ones that have zero defense, those are they. Whenever they die, they will bring out a Yang Zing monster in that mode. So zero defense, the Yang Zing brings out is in defense mode, and if it has zero attack, then the Yang Zing monster it brings out is going to be attack mode. So just a couple of notes, and then also run one copy of T King. I want to try and make this deck a little bit more competitive. So since searching and graveyard based play are kind of a big deal, mostly searching, and it doesn't hinder my deck at all. Then I run the one copy of Deacon. I feel like it helps. And that does it for all of the monsters. Moving into the spells. Really small spell lineup. We have three copies of Path. You gotta do it. It is their pot of avarice. Gives them the recyclability that they need. Two copies of Dark Hole. No Raigeki in this, just two Dark Holes. There's no reason for me to run two copies, I mean, an extra copy of Raigeki when Dark Hole is a two. Plus, my deck benefits more from Dark Hole because, you know, when Yang things die, they get stuck. All right, next up we have two copies of Mystical Space Typhoon. We have two lances in order to protect our Jouto, a Book of Moon also to protect our Jouto, or just to disrupt plays, and that does it for all of these spells. Moving into our traps, we have Solemn, Bottomless, and Torrent. Our summoning turns very good in Yangzing because they always want to die. We've got two copies of Break through Skill. Then we also have one copy of Yangzing Brutality. It gives me a little bit of damage without control and some variety in my traps. Plus, when you know the Yangzing monster dies, I get more Yangzings, so that's always nice. 
We've got one copy of Zephyr Defined Strike. We've got four targets that we can possibly get into our extra deck, and also just kind of gives me a little bit more variety as well. Next up, we have the three copies of Yangon Creation, also another card that you kind of have to run three of. This allows you to do silly plays and really get your synchro summoning going. So, run that of three. And then we run two copies of Mistake. This deck isn't hindered by Mistake in the slightest. Um, most of the searching, quote unquote searching, that this deck does is when they get destroyed, they special summon out monsters, so this doesn't hurt me very much at all. So I think it's a good choice to make this deck, uh, give this deck a little bit of a competitive edge against the, uh, the Bastard decks. And that does it for the traps. Moving into the extra deck, we got two copies of all of the not dragons. First, we're going to start off with Baxia. Baxia is probably my favorite of all of them, just because of the utility that you get out of this card. So when this card is Synchro Summon, you can target any number of cards on the, on the field equal to the different attributes of the monsters used to make him up, and then you send those back to the deck. This with Treasure of the Yang Zing and um, Tao Tai during uh, your opponent's turn is really nice. You get to bounce two cards. Then he also has the added ability of targeting any card on your side of the field and a monster in your graveyard. You destroy the card on the field and special summon a monster at your graveyard. He's really nutty behind creation and he also lets you go for those synchro plays. I can get a, um, a Yazi off of him, which I think is really cool. So I like his utility. Next up we have two copies of Yazi, the true boss monster of Yang Zing. First turn Yazi is nothing to laugh at. It can't be destroyed by battle, car or can't be targeted, and you know, no, uh, can't be affected by traps. Other than that, he acts exactly like Scrap Dragon does. He just beats for 200 less. So he gets to pop things, and when he dies, he gets to get out any Yangtze monster he wants. So that is very cool. Next up, we have two copies of Chopping, the, you know, considered boss monster of Yangtze. Really cool stun ability. Opponent can't activate the effects of any attributes of monsters used to make them up. So if I use Fire, Earth, and Wind, my opponent can't activate Fire, Earth, and Wind. When he dies, I get a tuner, and when a monster would be destroyed by battle or card effect that my opponent controls, I can special summon a Yangzing monster from my deck of the attribute that that monster died. So if a dark monster on my side, on my opponent's side of the field died, I get to special summon a dark monster. So, very, very cool. For other monsters, we run one copy of Star Eater because he's my ghost rare and I love him and I have to run into something. One copy of Leo. Pop Red Dragon Archfiend, Crimson Blader, Stardust Dragon, uh, Clear Wing Synchro Dragon, Moonlight Black Rose, Armades, and then Herald of Arc Light. Herald of Arc Light, I think, is a fun choice. Him behind Beyond can be really annoying, and just means my opponent has to expend that many more resources to get rid of him. Meanwhile, all their cards are getting banished, so that's kind of funny. So, guys, that does it for the Yang Zing deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed what you saw. Let me know what you guys think, and I will be back to you later with future videos. This is Parker Lad out.